Printing with carved wood blocks has a long history. With the advent of the printing press, woodcuts began to be used in printed works. Yet, very little is known about who carved wood blocks for cheaply printed materials in early modern England. In November 2014, we set out to recreate the experience of making woodcuts to be used in our own printing project. Historic preservationist William Palmer explains the material we used for carving, walnut blocks to practice on, and boxwood blocks for the final woodcuts. Boxwood should cut pretty smooth for you. It's a you know, very tight grain material. It's uh, about uh, 20 years per half inch of uh, growth. Um, and so because of that, it's very, very dense. The, the walnut is fairly dense, but you'll notice that you can see these fine pores yeah. which again right from the, uh, the start those will print um, but as you print it several times it would actually take uh, you know this fine fine material out um, and it would kind of flat block at that point so you could print with walnut it would just take you a couple couple inkings before it okay. was good designs were likely often drawn directly onto the wood blocks to be carved However, with a pre-drawn design, such as those we brought to our wood carving session, our first task was to transfer our drawings accurately onto the wood blocks. We employed the graphite method, whereby we covered the backs of our designs with a layer of graphite, and traced our drawings on top of the blocks of wood, leaving a graphite reproduction of our images. Some scholars believe that only beveled knives were used in carving wood blocks. Existing blocks, however, seem to demonstrate a variety of tools used, including gouges and chisels. Will Palmer explains the use of such carving tools. So basically uh, what you're going to have is these blocks and you're going to want to cut out the white space because the black space is the only part that prints. Uh, so you got like a, a skew chisel, which is a flat chisel, um, and in this case it's beveled on both sides. Okay. Um, and then cut kind of a skew angle. Uh, you've got the V cutting tool, which is pretty traditional for like uh, linoleum block cutting, uh, where you'll just kind of cut around and it will make a V groove within that. Um, and that takes out a lot of material very quickly, so it's very easy to use in that way. Uh, whereas this, it, you know, you can mark a line and then you have to kind of dig out and round up to it. Uh, and then you've got, you know, gouges, uh, kind of like this tool right here, uh, where you have a couple options. Either you can use it like the V-cutting tool, or you can also follow a curve um, around. We found the carving difficult and labor-intensive due to the hardness of the boxwood and our unfamiliarity with the tools. I think we could do, but it would be hard. Oh, wait, it's on the edge of the line. So you got higher points back here. And so you're probably going to want to start back in that area and start pulling back, go all the way through, and then bring this whole thing down. <laughs> Nevertheless, we persevered, and after about five hours of work, we had six usable woodcuts for our ballad. Our experience was both entertaining and illuminating. Early modern ballad woodcuts have often been considered crude and unartistic. However, this experience has given us a new appreciation of the intricacies of even the simplest designs and the level of craftsmanship necessary to produce a pleasing and recognizable image. Their ubiquity on early modern ballads is a testament to their past popularity, and our endeavors to recreate them have reinvigorated our passion for them.